Ladies and gentlemen, Arena Breakout has come and gone, sadly. I was able to get my hands on a beta key. Unfortunately, it was only for about a week and a half. However, I was able to experience pretty much everything that the game had to offer. I streamed it nearly the entire time that I had it. So this video is going to break down some of the issues that I think the game needs to flesh out to really take it to the next level, as well as the things that I enjoyed about the game. So let's dive in. So we'll get through this pretty quick, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the things that I think the game needs to focus on in order to improve, starting with the performance of the game. Now, let me be clear about this. The performance of the game overall is actually really good. Performs really well, really solid performance overall. However, I don't know if it was more of a server side thing, if it was like a data transmission issue, networking kind of deal. Every now and then though, I would go from an average of 120 frames, dipping down all the way to 20 or 30. This did not happen often. It did happen sometimes in gunfights and it happened more so in a full 4v4 server. When I queued in with only one other person on my team, it happened far less. Graphically, the fidelity of the game visually was sound. I don't think it really had anything to do with my system being bogged down in terms of performance. I never capped out or maxed out on any of my hardware, and the game, as far as the visual fidelity, never lost any of its integrity. I think more so, it had to have been on just the server side or the data transmission, the infrastructure side of what was being sent and received that was causing these issues. Overall, though, the performance was solid. Compared to a game like Grey Zone Warfare, it's night and day. The game runs really well. It looks great. The systems that are in place in the game function really well. They're really intuitive, very easy, very straightforward, very responsive. Overall, I think it's in a good state. All that needs to really be done is fixing whatever infrastructure issue is causing these blips to level out that performance, give you a smoother experience overall. My second little issue, if you will, was some of the menu features were kind of annoying to have to deal with. When you navigate around the menu, there's a back button, a home button, and then a few tabs at the bottom of the screen that can take you to different areas of the game. The contacts list is one that comes to mind. When you click into your contacts list and then you click onto a name of a contact and go into the missions or whatever it is they may be selling, you cannot click the contacts button again to go back to the previous menu. You have to click the back button, which isn't a big deal. That's what the back button is for. However, it would be nice if the contacts buttons or rather the menu buttons in general were not a one way feature and would allow you to click them once to get into it and then once to go back out of it. Not a huge deal, but something that could be improved upon. To second that, and as kind of a third point, is being stuck in a team when you go into a match and not being able to get out of that team unless you manually remove yourself from it. I really enjoy the fact that it matches you with the team automatically. I think it adds to the tactical cooperative state of the game and forces you to play as such. It's more of a guarantee that there's going to be a map full of people rather than a team of solos, duos, maybe one quad. It's just a nice little quality of life feature. And of course, you can turn it off if you wish. But when you leave the game, extract from the game, you are still in that team and you can't leave that team or match into another game until you manually go back, leave the team, come back out and re-queue. 
you need to be able to automatically leave the team when you exfil. Not a huge deal, but again, just a quality of life thing that could be improved upon. Moving on to point number four. There needs to be a more fleshed out economy system. This is where Tarkov is still going to really shine. The integration with the marketplace and the overall trader economy in Tarkov is far superior to this game. For all intent and purpose, this game really does not have an economy system. It does have a marketplace page where you can go to one or two click an item to sell it, one or two click an item to buy it, but there really isn't any connection to why the market system is there other than to have access to items that you cannot get through traders. The market system needs to be fleshed out. When you're looting in the game, you're really only looting to be able to sell those items. They serve no purpose at the moment. You're not crafting items to use for guns or gear or crafting items to use to upgrade a hideout. This is where Tarkov's experience in this specific category of their game is really going to shine through and continue to lead in this front. Now moving on to my next point, which would bring us to point number five, there needs to be a much more balanced system behind selling items to vendors. The average gun cost when I was assembling a custom made weapon was around $100,000 or 100,000 Cohen in game currency. Compared to what I was coming out of raids with, I was making roughly four to $10,000 selling anywhere from 15 to 20 different items. That is a huge disparity between what it costs to make something versus what you're getting paid to go into a raid, risk losing everything you just bought, coming back out of that raid and selling the loot you found. The value for loot being sold needs to be way higher. Now to kind of second the looting and buying and selling and trading system, I do enjoy the fact that again, those quality of life features and some of the more cumbersome tasks you would have to do in Tarkov, like looking up every single item individually that you may need to barter for something is automatically pulled into the menu if you choose to buy something that you need a barter item for. It simplifies the process and makes it much faster. I enjoy that. It's a nice feature. It just makes things move along a little bit more smoothly. However, there needs to be far more value placed on items that you sell. There are a couple of game modes that you can go into that claim to have higher tier loot. However, I had a really hard time getting into those servers. I don't know if that's because they weren't prioritizing them or people just weren't playing them but I did not have any success getting into the highest difficulty server. Now, finally, our sixth point, and again, a rather minimal one, but still one that is odd and doesn't quite make sense, is the fact that you cannot manually unload shotguns in the game. I do not know why, but you have to shoot every shell out of the shotgun before you can put ammo, back into it that you actually want to use. I did not encounter this with any other weapon. I was able to remove the magazine and remove the ammunition. However, with a shotgun, there is no option to manually remove the shells. If the shotgun holds seven, then you have to shoot all seven shells before you can load new ammo into that gun. Again, not really a huge deal. There are plenty of other weapons in the game to use, but something that definitely needs to be changed as I did enjoy using the shotguns and many people will certainly be using them as well. The feature to manually remove ammo and add better ammo has to be in the game.
Now, all in all, and to wrap up the video, I had a really good time with Arena Breakout. I think that it is a solid game, and for a game that was released in beta that no one was charged to play, at least as far as I know, there may have been people who did pay for access for the game, the game is in a great position. Its visual fidelity is fantastic. The systems that are in place are almost a direct replica of Escape from Tarkov, so it's extremely familiar. But the quality of life features and the fluidity and ease of those systems that have been added to this specific take on the genre improve the way that you navigate the game outside of a match as well as inside of the match. All in all, it just works well, and it works in a very smooth manner. Now, again, I don't think this game is better than Tarkov, and I don't think that it will kill Tarkov. I think Tarkov still offers a unique, far more hardcore experience than Arena Breakout, but for someone who is looking to take a break from that kind of experience, or someone who's new to this genre, I think Arena Breakout offers a great introduction to how this type of game works and how the systems that exist within this game function while offering very easy to use and understand quality of life features. There are a few things that need to be polished, expanded upon and fleshed out, that is certainly true, but in an industry right now where just about anyone with a computer and enough free time can release an alpha game or a beta game and charge money for it, it's really refreshing to play something that works. Grey Zone Warfare has a ton of potential, but quite frankly the game is just a disaster. The fact that it's so incomplete is just not acceptable for something that's being charged for. Arena Breakout really stands apart in my mind for that reason. Anyway guys, I'll wrap it up there. I thank you very much for stopping by. Let me know what you think about Arena Breakout. If you were able to get your hands on a beta key, let me know your experience of the game. If you agree, disagree. It would be extremely appreciated if you threw a like on the video. Really helps YouTube understand that you enjoy this type of content. I hope to see you guys back here in the future. We do stream three days a week here on YouTube and Twitch. It's always fun to have people in the chat to talk to about this very type of thing. Catch you guys later. Have a great week.